Okay. So, um, so we've been looking at the difference between cell group, care cell, home group meeting, uh, and also what the vision of the cell church is, which is, or the cell group uh, ministry is, which is disciple making. Okay. So any questions that you might have uh, regarding the working of the cell group or uh, you know any other question any questions that you might have you can just put it in the chat or also you know you can ask any questions you know just think about okay let's say if you want to have a cell group ministry uh, in in the church where you are you know so maybe from that point you could have some questions um, or maybe you start your own church or ministry and then, you know, so what kind of questions would you have? What kind of doubts would you have uh, about this cell group? You can, you can ask. You can take some time to um, answer that. Any questions at all? Okay, so um, yeah, so my question is, you know, have uh, any of you been part of this kind of a cell group? You know, we looked at the difference. Um, have any of you been part of this kind of a cell group? You know, where intentionally we're looking at disciple making, um, or you could share what kind of a you know, or a cell cell group or a weekly meeting that you are part of. I think Aaron Aaron shared um, last uh, a few uh, in a couple of classes back, right? She shared about how um, she's part of two groups, and one group is a, is a big group, uh, and it's by the church, uh, and which meets in the area where she is, and then the other one is a meeting of friends. So both I see are you know very different from the cell group that we were talking about, right? So um, anyone else who's part of, Dave, are you part of any, you know, a small group during the week? Apart from your Sunday meeting. Okay, you are, you are okay, fine, fine. So is it, uh, is it similar to this? Uh, is it different? You call it house fellowship, okay. So when it's a house fellowship meeting, so uh, everybody in that area is invited, right? It can be a big group as much as the house can accommodate. Is it? Is it so? Is it something like that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So there, there would be a leader designated by the church, and uh, so that leader is that person uh, living in that house, or it could be any other. You know, the house is just used for the meeting. Uh, because it's convenient, it's in the area, it's big and all that. But then the the one who is the leader of that house fellowship, um, is it the same person or someone who comes or maybe or the, okay from the leadership in the church? Okay, understand. So uh, so the 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 house fellowship group meets in that uh, particular house, and they have this meeting, and uh, the leader of that particular meeting would be someone from the church. Okay, someone uh, in the sense of from the, maybe a pastor or one of the pastors or a designated leader. Okay, understood that. Okay, so that's called a house fellowship. Okay. And uh, so does this meet weekly or uh, like once in two weeks? Um, weekly, okay, that's good. Okay, fine. So you you uh, so I I guess you're you're able to you know see the difference between this cell group um, ministry, right, and maybe a house fellowship or a care cell. Now each serves its purpose, right. Now this the purpose of this is is um, you know is very clear. It's discipleship making and raising up leaders and so on. Okay, right. Anyone else, uh, Prince? What about you? Um, are you part of a, like a weekly meeting, um, a small group? Okay. 
no okay okay so the church meets only on sundays and there is no other meeting apart from the church service is that so okay okay right fine and what about you karan how, how are things with you um are you part of a midweek bible study or a small group okay fine so you're not part of any uh, uh, how are things in mysore sid how, how do you um the church that you're part of that you're serving do they have a cell group or do they have care cells what is it called uh, right now we haven't started yet sir because of all this covid and things because like that COVID. okay so okay. we have started but we usually have once in a month okay uh, one once a month okay and uh, this uh, is it similar to what uh, they were sharing that it's a house fellowship or is it uh, different I'm, i mean once in a month we do this youth thing and um, we used to do it once in a week when like we all the boys we get together and have a bible study kind of like oh, a okay. but uh, oh, it's been few months that we have stopped so. right, right right oh i see okay okay so that so the the the, the youth would get together and this will happen in the church itself right it's not yeah, in a yeah. oh, okay fine yeah. understood yeah got it okay so i think aaron said something um okay three groups okay okay three uh, groups that you're part of okay so what is the third group one is of course you said the church uh group which is about 30 or uh, odd in number and second one you said is a smaller group of friends and what is the third group okay it's in the colony okay Oh, I thought the sec that uh, okay, the church one was the colony group. Okay, I see. Okay, so you have all these kind of groups. So you see the you know basic difference, right? Difference between the uh, cell group, uh, the vision of the cell group uh, ministry, and the vision for you know the other groups or other uh, like care cells or house fellowships. You see the difference, right? Okay, so when we uh, we're going to look at uh, what happens in a uh, a cell group meeting, okay. Um, so you then you you see that okay, there are here are some more differences. Okay, uh, it's it's very different from uh, a house fellowship or a home group meeting. Okay, so let me just share the screen. Um, Okay. Okay. So the cell group meeting, right? So, so this is what we see uh, happens in a cell group meeting. So, it could be for um, it means, uh, of course, the frequency of meeting. It depends. It can be a weekly meeting. It can be once in two weeks. So, but preferably, you know, weekly. Or once in two weeks, you know. But the thing is, once it goes beyond that, if they're going to be meeting once a month, then uh, you know, if you miss one meeting, that means the group has not met for you know one whole month, right? So, uh, so, so the thing is, that's that's not a very good thing over a period of time. You know, if you miss like two meetings, three meetings, then in a year, it'll be they would have just met for nine times or eight times in a year. Right, so, so the meeting uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's good if they're meeting weekly. If not weekly, at least alternate weeks, like once in fifteen days, okay, once in two weeks, right. And the time for each meeting um, uh, is uh, it can be one hour, it can be one and a half hours, it can be two hours, right. So the thing is um, to understand what kind of a group it is, and then to have a uh, to have an understanding that. The meeting would be for this this time, you know, because what happens is if we, uh, well, there there could be people who 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 have a lot of time, you know, who don't have uh, much to do the next day, and maybe they would they would enjoy spending a lot of time, maybe two hours, three hours even is fine, uh, but there would be others who who need to, you know, go get back, uh, maybe who who have traveled a bit, and they need to get some things done. So for them. You know they might hesitate the next time you call them for a meeting 
like saying, okay, hey, this the meeting will just go on forever. So rather than attend, I'd rather not attend. So, so it's good to have a start time and a finish time, and so that the you know the the formal meeting is over, and then maybe people want to stay on, and if it's okay with the with the leaders, uh, they can stay on, you know, catch up, fellowship, and so on. But so that the others who need to get back can actually do so, right? Okay, so so those are some things. Um, with regard to location, well, it's preferred. Uh, you know, with with the with the with re regarding the, this one thing. You know, with regarding the the day on which the cell group happens. Uh, if it's weekly, okay, is it a Friday or a Saturday or a midweek thing? Or if it's going to be once in two weeks, it's is it going to be again? You know, on a Friday or a Saturday or uh, what is the day? And if it is, uh, you know, if the day is finalized, what is the time? You know? And also. Uh, where is the cell group meeting? Okay, if these three things, the day, the time, and the venue, if these things are fixed, it's always good. Right? So everyone in everyone's mind, they know. Um, okay, this is the day, this is the time, this is the place. So the day, time, and place, if it's fixed, is easier. It's easier for the group to meet. Whereas if every week you're going to be changing, you know, if you're going to be changing the day or the time or the place then it is it, it becomes a bit of an effort for the group to meet uh, because uh, and also for the leader you know you as a leader if if you need if you're constantly changing it then you need to communicate that to the group as well right so it's good to keep this constant the date the time the place well if the group decides okay you know we are meeting in just one why don't we meet in other houses well, that's also fine, uh, depending on their if their other the group is okay with it. Uh, you know, if they are willing to have it in their homes, and if it's convenient for them, and uh, that's also fine. But the only thing is, when there is, when there are changes, you need to communicate to the group. You need to communicate to the group uh, that there is a change. Otherwise, you know, it it results in a lot of confusion. And so that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so um, some general guidelines is that uh, are that are like this. Uh, everyone is encouraged to share. Okay, so share openly, share honestly. Uh, take time to do that. Okay, so each person, for a person to be able to share openly, honestly, um, they need to feel safe in the sense. Uh, they need to feel. They need to know that okay, they will not be made fun of. Okay, so if you, if they if you say something and then you make fun of it, you make a joke about it, uh, or you know uh, you look down upon it, uh, then they're not going to share the next time. Right? Suppose they are sharing about some of the mistakes that they have done, and uh, and you're going to look down upon them or kind of judge them. Right? Now the next time they're not going to share so um so the thing is to make it safe for people to share so that they will understand everybody will understand when they see that okay when i'm sharing something i realize that person is sharing something and here i see the others who are listening attentively okay they are not making fun of this other person they are you know even when it's uh, when it's something that is not nice Know, that is being shared about themselves still the group is compassionate they are understanding they're not judging right they're not making fun and what happens even after the meeting right sometimes we make a joke about what the person shared after the meeting is over uh, you know none of that is happening then the person feels you no know, uh, maybe the person comes as a new uh, member of the cell group and they have all these fears and insecurities but as they come and attend and as they see that yes you know there uh, i am being valued when i say something they are listening you know that is one when i say something i'm not being made fun of i'm not being judged um, then they will be able to uh, feel safe right so and also the other thing is also confidentiality which means that okay if they are saying something, if they are sharing something which is sensitive, 
okay something about their lives something about what is happening at present maybe they are one of their family members so and they and they sharing it in you know in confidence knowing that you will not spread it or maybe they share a prayer request saying please pray um you know this is something i'm sharing in confidence with this group so kindly pray but if each member on the group or some members of the group are sharing it with others and right? they are talking about it with other people then you know they kind of spreading the news uh which was actually shared in confidence right this saying that okay please keep it uh please keep it con- confidential but kindly do not share that then that news is being spread so you know so one of the important thing is to keep it confidential if sensitive uh in sensitive matters are shared okay then um the families of those who are being part of the life group family members neighbors okay so one can reach out to them uh, to share christ with them right pray for them and uh, pray and ask god for divine uh, appointment and um, orchestration of uh, you know uh, of situations so that there are opportunities for the sharing of the gospel okay so uh, and maybe see now this group is is a small small group it's 12 or 15 people there can be occasions like let's say a celebration maybe somebody's birthday maybe somebody's anniversary uh maybe it's christmas maybe it's uh, you know easter resurrection sunday so um maybe there's a celebration the the you know the, the group can actually plan and decide okay this is a celebration we will invite others we will invite others who are not believers who are maybe friends maybe family maybe neighbors to be part of the celebration and during the time maybe we can have the sharing of the gospel it can be in various ways maybe people can talk about their life maybe they can watch a movie uh, you know which which uh, uh, which talks about the gospel uh, several things they can do okay maybe the whole thing can come out in the form of activities and games and so on maybe the children can do a skit whatever right so reaching out to family members and friends can happen in that manner you okay, know keeping in mind that the group is meeting primarily for discipleship so they're going to be learning how can i be a follower of christ okay so whereas these occasions can be used for outreach can be used to share the gospel okay okay so we will keep the interaction in line with what christ is doing in our midst okay and uh, stop from storytelling or what is irrelevant to the subjects we are discussing so what is so uh, we will come to that you know what is actually being discussed the content of what is being discussed uh, we will come to that but the thing is whatever we are discussing on it's good to you know it's it's important that the focus is on that so the focus is does not go away from that and there's a lot of time being wasted you know already people are coming for an hour and a half or 2 hours and if there's irrelevant discussion maybe talking about something um during that meeting time then it becomes a waste of time right for the others okay so no murmuring gossip uh no criticism you know uh, unless it's constructive and uh, not being judgmental so so nothing like that happens um so it's uh, it depends on each member of the group to make sure that nothing of this thing happens right so which means that the leader uh should reiterate hey you know we we will not have any of these things in the group right maybe in a formal way uh, while talking about the vision of the cell group the leader can state that or in any formal ways one on one to say that if we will not you know if we see something like that happening to say immediately hey, we will not do that right um okay so so that's something to keep in mind um these are some of the general guidelines then prayer you know this is an area which a prayer when the group prays together uh, there can be a lot of growth there can be a lot of strength we are inviting you know god's presence and god's power to work in our midst so definitely prayer is to be 
part of the live group, cell group. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just using these words interchangeably, like live group and cell group, because that is what we call it right now. Um, so we can ask each member to include the cell members and the, and and also the ministry of the group in in their personal prayer time, right? So the so each person in the group can individually pray for the cell group, individually pray for the people in the cell group, and the needs that they were mentioned there. So so they can do that in in their personal prayer time also, right? And uh, and one of the things to keep in mind is the vision of the church. Okay, what is the vision of the church? Okay, uh, well. The vision of the church may maybe may have been explained uh, when they joined the church, or maybe it's uh, reiterated every Sunday. And you know, at all people's church, you know, it's done that uh, the vision of the church is reiterated every Sunday during the announcements time, right? And so, uh, so that vision is to be always uh, kept in the foremost in our mind. You know, this is what we are as a church. And the fact that we are all part of that church, okay? Um, so these are some things to keep in mind. Okay. Then what happens, you know, in a typical meeting? Let's say if it's uh, one and a half hours. This is now this is just a suggestion, right? It's a, it's a suggestion. So it's a it's a good suggestion. You know, these are some things which will work. So we can do that. Um, but it can be flexible, right? So what happens? Ten minutes, you know, people arrive. Let's say you say, okay, six o'clock, we will start, and uh, it's a uh, like a Friday evening or a Saturday evening, six o'clock. So people come, then there is, uh, you know, some refreshments, which are which is not mandatory, but it's an option, right? Maybe, uh, you know, that cell group leader feels that okay, they they are not in a position to serve refreshments every time. Uh, but mostly, you know, at least one tea, coffee, or juice, or something—it's it's possible. But let's say they are not able to, then no, uh, no pressure, right? Uh, no, no force, no, no pressure. So they can meet, uh, and then if there are no refreshments, they they're just talking, and then then uh, a short time of worship after that. Okay, maybe there's someone in the group who can lead who can maybe play an instrument uh, so they can be songs of uh, praise and worship or if there is no one to lead and no one to play then they can even play music uh, play a video and and sing along to that and they can play the live group leader can choose some songs you know play some songs maybe some three songs one after the other uh, if it's 10 minutes 12 minutes you know that will be the time and uh, the group can Know, sing and worship, sing along and worship. Okay, then there could be a 10 minute icebreaker, but you know, to get to know people, etc. But if it's a group that knows each other, then you can use that time for you know for the praise and worship as well. You know? And five minutes to to talk about the vision of the cell group, if there are newcomers, uh, to talk about you know what what the cell group is about, how often they meet, why they meet, etc. You know, that can be again shared. Then there can there will be a, a study of God's word with the discussions. Okay, now now this this is something that's um, uh, I just wanted to kind of emphasize in a cell group uh, model of the church. What happens is that the cell this church normally suggests or sometimes mandates in the sense says, okay, this is what needs to be shared in a cell group. Primarily, you know, most of the time, this is what needs to be. If the cell group is meeting, then this is what they can, uh, or they can, or they cannot do, right? So so what is it when, when it comes to the word study? Uh, one thing that at, at All People's Church, what we suggest is that the cell group studies the sermon which was already shared on Sunday. So when I say studies, you know, it, it means that uh, they would look at the practical application of it. Okay, now, because everybody's part of church, everybody's, everybody in the group is attending all people's church. Okay, so they've, they would have attended the church on Sunday or watched the service online. 
now when they are meeting together, they're talking about the message. Okay, how that message was relevant to them, applicable to them, how they were able to apply it in their own lives, what they learned, and and maybe you know uh, they could also be uh, um, talking about. Well, this was difficult. You know, I didn't understand this. And there would be others in the group who would be able to share, or maybe the life group, the cell group leader himself or herself would be able to answer that. Okay. So now um, let me just uh, quickly share about the content that is being there that could be followed. Um, uh, just give me a minute. I'll do that. Now, you know, the, 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 the reason why we do this is that... Um, you know, so that the the, the group, see, that, let's say there are about um, 12, uh, 12 groups or 12, uh, 12 or more live groups, uh, cell groups in the church, then, you know, you, you cannot have a situation where each group is doing different things. Okay, like, let's say you have a cell group that is currently following what is happening on Sunday. No, Sunday morning service, so they are following that sermon. Then, let's say if you have another cell group and they are doing a study on, let's say, the book of Daniel or the end times, then you have another group which is doing gospel, uh, you know, study on the gospels. Then, then there is no, um, there is no cohesiveness. There's no, you know, everybody is doing their own thing, and uh, you know, so then each person is doing things differently. Right, and uh, they're not growing together. Well, they are. Well, see, since they're looking at God's word, yes, there is growth, but there is no unity. There is no focus on uh, what everyone is doing as believers, as as body of the uh, as members of the body of Christ, uh, of body of Christ. Right. So let me just share. You know, see what we. I I I don't know if you've noticed. You you might have seen it. Um. In in the in our website, we have these sermons, and we have the sermon notes, right? So let me just share that. Okay, so we have what what we have a we have a sermon note, and in the sermon notes, now this is last Sunday's message, okay, so January twenty three. Um, the title was how to receive what God has provided. Okay, so that was the sermon that was shared, message that was shared. Um, so now. There, this is a life group study guide. Okay, so it comes with a, a, a guide for the study. So it says, okay, uh, here is something's listed. You know, listen to God's word. That is, take turns to read the following scripture. Okay, Romans chapter four, seventeen to twenty-one. So basically, about what um, Abraham did, he refused to waver away from the promises of God right? and, and a few other things that he did. So we're going to, you know, we'll be studying about that. So, um, so everyone reads this. Then next one is investigate God's word together. Okay. Discuss the following based on the steps of faith. Okay. That were shared in the sermon from Romans 4, 70 to 21. Okay. Refusing to waver. That's something. Refuse to waver. Maybe you know each person can share uh, an example. Okay, this is how this happened to me, and uh, I faced this challenge, and this is how I was able to practice this. I refuse to waver. Or somebody could share. You know, uh, every time there was a challenge, yes, I wavered at the promise of God. So this is something that I learned right, that I should. Not refuse, or should refuse to waver. Waver meaning, you know, to change my mind, uh, to to you know, to to move from this, to think about this uh, one moment, and then the other thing, the other moment. No, I should not waver. I should be steady, right? Uh, I I would get back to the word of God. Get back to believing God. Okay, and okay, becoming stronger in faith by praising God. So these are some things that the group can talk about the group and discuss and maybe somebody can ask a question 
you know how do i how do i refuse to waver how do i stand strong uh see because i get flooded with thoughts of doubt i get flooded with thoughts of anxiety our anxious thoughts uh yes i believe god but then when these things come then how do i do that you know how do i stand strong so you know the others who have actually heard the sermon who have looked into the word they share their insights okay so you see there's a discussion so it's not one person preaching but here it's a study so the life group a cell group leader is actually facilitating the discussion okay um there was already an input from the sermon the previous uh, i mean that sunday so the group is meeting and they are discussing the the group leader is facilitating the discussion maybe by asking questions maybe by asking people uh, what do you think you know how were you able to um, put this into practice did you face any challenges uh, did you learn anything new so the so, so the cell group leader is not preaching a message again um but really reiterating the cell group leader might take 2 minutes hey this is what we heard on sunday we looked at this we studied the scripture and so very quickly maybe the cell group leader or anyone in the group could reiterate uh and summarize and review uh, that sermon right so that everybody okay uh, everybody is also memory is refreshed saying um, hey, yes we remember this is what we heard on sunday and then quickly go into the discussion okay so we so this is online uh so it talks about fellowship and also talks about prayer um just to help the life group leaders to give um you know the life group can actually follow this they can come prepared the life group can come prepared having gone through this uh, because it's a study guide so this comes with the sermon notes so the so the sermon note is also there the sermon outline and the sermon notes are there they can listen to the sermon uh, following uh, uh, a lot to the sermon along with the sermon notes and come prepared with a study guide and that can happen uh, when they are meeting okay so you see that uh, what what is the advantage of that right what happens when we when we do that well the whole church let's say you have many cell groups then everyone in the cell group is is growing right is growing in understanding of the word that was shared on sunday okay so everyone in that group you know irrespective of what level of faith or what um, level of maturity they are in may uh, based on the challenges they face etc they are able to put to practice this word okay uh, they come to a place of being able to practice the word apply the word in their personal lives so what what happens when we apply the word in our personal lives you know we we see the power of it okay we see the power of the truth at work in our personal lives it's not it's no longer a theory right it's something that is uh, that is practiced in our lives it's not just a theory that is just there for the understanding it is something that is practice and when we practice it okay we we face some challenges what are the challenges you are encouraging one another and the word of god becomes even more deeply entrenched in our hearts right so the word of god is and needs to be deeply entrenched in our hearts for it to bear fruit so we know the parable of the sower right the enemy uh, tries to take away when challenges come the thorns try to choke the word um and then you know desires for other things pride of life again tries to you know stifle the growth of the word but um in when we do this the word is nurtured the word of god is cared for it is watered by faith and uh, it's not just you know me doing this alone but i'm doing it with other friends who are on the same journey of um growing to be like jesus of wanting to be like jesus wanting to follow him and wanting to do his will so i'm doing it in the company of others and growing spiritually okay so 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 you see that it's different because it's not one person preaching the others listening but it's actually you know something that we have already heard that was preached 
that particular Sunday. Now I am getting a deeper understanding of it by discussing it. I'm getting a deeper understanding of it by apl applying it. And uh, whatever maybe did not work, maybe I did something wrong, right? Or my expectation was wrong. And all that gets corrected. And I'm encouraged right, to continue following God's word. Right? And that happens in the small group. And finally, we have about 15 minutes of prayer and ministry. Now, this is for a you know 90 minutes meeting. Now, if it's for a two hour, 120 minutes meeting, it can it can vary. Now, this is again just a suggestion, right? But the thing is to to have this in mind: what follows next, what comes after next. So it's good for the life group, uh, the cell group leader, to have this in mind, so that uh, you know he or she can be flexible. But you need to, uh, you know, at no point should be thinking, okay, what happens next? What should we do next? Right? So you already have a clear path. Okay, this is done. This is done. So you, you know, there's no wasting of time. And you're already going from one thing to the next. Um, but to be also mindful of what God is doing. Right? Mindful of the fact and be open to the fact. As long as you know that it is God leading. Right? So maybe the prayer time will be more, maybe the worship time will be more, and that can that can happen. Okay, so you see, you know, the, the beauty of it, the value of this. Right. So um, so now, you know, different life groups have different kinds of uh, you know uh, uh, content that is being discussed. Now there could be a new believers cell group. You know, you can call it differently. And maybe that's only looking at the foundational things. Right? Uh, well, we could do that also, but then uh, to to make it known, right? to make it known to the leadership. Okay, this is what we're going to be doing for some time at least, right? Because everybody is a new believer; they haven't gone through the foundational doctrines yet. So maybe uh, take some time to do that. Only the foundations, uh, so that everybody's strong. And uh, even and and the foundations also, you know, you have the content uh, as far as APC is concerned. Right, you have the foundation scores. You have so you know several things can be uh, can can happen. Uh, I remember we had something called a workplace uh, professionals group. Okay, so these were workplace professionals, people who were people who were working professionals. Sorry, working professionals group. So they were professionals. They were uh, working in different companies. Now they were getting together, and the content which they which they discussed was from the book, you know, uh, Marketplace Ministry. And uh, you know, uh, I forget the exact title of the book, but so that was uh, something that they used, and they used that as. Uh, you know, so, something for, um, let me just get the name of the group book, I think, uh, Timeless Principles for the Workplace. Okay, so they use that as content for the, uh, for their for their life groups. So they would have their, their questions around that because they they face certain challenges in the work workplace. So they would find their, you know, uh, answers for the kind of challenges and how to do, go about doing it, how to be a believer, um, how to, you know, work effectively at the same time, you know, not lose your testimony, right, uh, and uh, and so on. So so these things would happen, and uh, it's important. What is the content that is being discussed? What is the content around? Uh, you know, that is also important, right? Okay, now, um, yeah. So any questions here? Any questions that you might have? Okay. Okay, I'm just sharing the notes again. Okay. Right, fine. So then, um, you know, looking at uh, a cell group meeting, so there is a balance emphasis right balanced emphasis when we say balance it's, it's wholesome it's not leaning to one side alone you know there is worship there is prayer there is study of the word there's fellowship 
uh, evangelism, everything. Like, so it is important that the group or the cell group uh, leader keeps this in mind. It's not, uh, you know, just focus on like one thing and then leave out the other, right? Let there be a holistic uh, emphasis on all this so that the, the one who is, the ones who are attending will grow up to be disciples, ministers, and leaders. Okay. So, um, so there is this uh, 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 person by name Jim Egley. So he developed a two, tool called, uh, you know, upward, inward, outward, and forward. Upward, inward, outward, and forward. So the focus. Uh, you know, if you look at um, uh, some of these scriptures. Uh, the words of the Lord Jesus, like Matthew 28 and 22 and verse 38, said, love your God, love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. Right? So the focus, uh, the emphasis needs to be upward, where we are loving God, where we are spending time with God, and we, we are loving Him, you know, with all our heart, wholeheartedly, with all our mind, with all our thinking, you know, and so on. Then it's also inward. Okay, inward. When we say inward, we are talking about uh, in the life group, okay, in the cell group. So upward, we're focusing on God. Each person in the life group, you know, the emphasis is spending time with Him, loving Him, right? adoring Him, worshiping Him, praying. Then inward, meaning you're focusing within the cell group. Okay, so Matthew 22 and verse 39, the Lord says, love your neighbor as yourself. So how am I, you know, within the life group, within the cell group, am I, you know, loving my neighbor, loving God, and I'm loving my neighbor, right? Helping one another, sharpening one another, correcting one another. So loving a neighbor, okay? Then it is also outward, which is reaching out, right? Go therefore, Matthew 28, 19, go therefore, make disciples. So it's also reaching out to others to share the gospel, to invite them to learn to follow Jesus together with you. And also going forward, meaning raising up leaders, right? teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you, the Lord Jesus said, Matthew 28, 20. So, um, so we're look, looking at all that, right? So the upward value, uh, if you want to look at it in detail, is a regular experience of God's presence in worship, in looking into the Word, and encountering Him, and uh, sharing about what He's doing in our lives personally, and uh, and so on. Right. So, so this is not just a traditional thing. This is not just so our prayer time, our worship time. It should not be just a you know list there which needs to be ticked off, right? Okay, now we had prayer, fine. Now we had worship, fine. But it's really a time to connect with God and a time to encounter His presence, right? So the upward focus, the inward focus. Again, we are living, uh, journeying together, moving together as people in the cell group, uh, committed people. Um, so committed to one another, committed to the committed to the Lord. So how can we do that? You know, how can we, as friends, over a period of time, how can we do that effectively? Um, helping one another be the best they can be. You know, helping one another to be, to follow the Lord the best way possible, um, and so on, right? Then outward, of course, is in their workplace, in whatever they are doing, to be, uh, to go, to reach out, to make disciples. Right? And forward, when we say forward uh, focus, it it is on helping others who are already following the Lord to be leaders, to be disciple, to be disciples who are making disciples. Okay, so training the people on biblical principles and uh, to be disciples just like how we see in the word word of God who also 
go ahead and make disciples now this this would help in uh, now in you know in in theory this seems very simple but we know that it can be challenging when we actually put it to practice but it's a good thing to keep this focus or keep this emphasis in every cell group so you know if a cell group is just inward looking you know taking care of the needs of the cell group member and forgetting to place an emphasis on the upward focus right then it becomes a very self centered life group they are just looking at okay their lives uh, you know my needs other people's needs and even it can be you know it, it's a good thing to take care of one another's needs but if we're not going to be focusing on you know looking at god seeking him and looking to him then we are missing out a very important aspect of discipleship right because first of all it the lord jesus said i choose you so that you might he chose the disciples so that they might be with him and that he might send them out so the being with jesus the upward focus is very very important so this inward focus should be should not be at the cost of leaving out the upward focus right so that's why we said it's a holistic group which means equal emphasis on each of these things so let's say the cell group is meeting only for you know fellowship and friendship and catching with one another and they're forgetting to focus on hey what can we do to reach out what can i do or what can each of us do in our workplace or in our homes um you know in our neighborhood to reach out to share the gospel if that focus is not there then again we become a very self centric group you know just just concerned about having fun a uh, good time or it, it just becomes a christian you know christian club right christian group meeting together having good fun clean fun uh, but you know not do, not not going beyond that okay okay so uh, at the other time uh, at the other you know i must also say that um, at the same time let's say the group the group is just focusing on outward focusing on missions and forgetting the fact that we are all people who need to fellowship who need to you know uh, be with each other take care of each other's needs and so if we forget that then again it becomes you know very very transactional right by that i mean okay what is the thing that we need to do let's do that let's get the job done and we're not worried about you know one another or we don't care about relating to one another and uh, you know uh, uh, praying for one another and uh, and just being friends with one another you know all that aspect is left out we are like very uh, meeting in a very regimental manner right okay what is the job let's do the job and then let's get back right so so that is why we said you know it's it's a good thing to keep in mind so it's a you know very easy thing to remember so it's upward inward outward and forward okay so these four emphases for the cell group okay okay so next uh, next class we look at how to lead a cell group meeting okay now these are all the you know some of the foundational basic things we are talking about cell groups and uh, so we're going to look at that so um you know the thing is um maybe you know you 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 the church which you are part of might be having a different model of uh, ministry for small groups and uh, that's fine we're just sharing you know something which is possible uh, as a small group for disciple making okay so uh, so it's good to, it's good to know this it's good to understand this um so that if you have an opportunity to do something like this then it would be great right if you if you can use these principles and use this model to build believers uh, to be disciples right okay okay so we'll stop here we'll catch up again uh, next week god bless guys god bless you